when does topology matter and when does topology really not matter? I get this question all the time. I'm going to try to explain this shit to you in the simplest way possible so you can extrapolate it. You can apply this to your own models and your own workflows, all right? I have this boat that I'm working on right here. And on this boat, I have different levels. I have floors and I have to cut holes in those floors so I can run the stairs through them, right? So here's a simple example. Here's a simple version of one of the floors. As you can see, it's just a flat surface, massive end gone, which means bad topology, okay? And I just have to cut a hole here so I can go add modifier, generate, boolean, difference, target, this little fucker right here, drop him down. I can run him through the floor like this, and then I can apply my boolean modifier, get rid of this. And I got a hole here, the topology is atrocious, but this is all I need with this object. Now this object is finished, there's nothing else that I have to do here. This is completed, all right? There's nothing else that I have to change on this object. It's a flat object. No problems appear here as a result of bad topology. Now, bad topology is going to cause you all sorts of problems otherwise. They just don't become visible or they don't bother me in this case because they don't matter to me. Here's a simple example of another object where topology really matters, all right? Let's say we have a little cube which we subdivided like this. I apply the subdivision surface modifier that I add a cylinder with 64 vertices. And this is the definition of terrible topology, all right? We're going to add another Boolean modifier here. And then we're going to go difference, target this cylinder again. And we're going to apply the modifier. And now we have a hole here with absolutely atrocious topology, all right? Now, if this is what you're going for, then you created that and your topology doesn't matter. However, if this is the situation where we want to do something else, for example, I want to make this look pretty. So now I want to add a bevel to this edge because I want to do smooth shading and I want to add a bevel here to control this shading. Well, you're going to notice when you have terrible topology, you try to select sharp edges with your alt right click edge, edge loop selection tool. It's not going to work properly. As you can see right here, if I use my loop cut tool, it's not going to work properly. Look what happens. This type of shit happens because of bad topology. You get shading issues of all sorts. Everything goes wrong. Now, what I can also do is try and select these edges at the top mark sharp like this. And even if I add a sharp here, you're still going to be able to see all sorts of artifacts, all sorts of shading issues, which appear here as a result of te terrible topology. Now, sometimes this is not going to bother you. Sometimes you're not worried about this. As you can see in this case, my loop tool is also not really going to work here properly. I still have n-gons. I'm still going to get uh, I'm still going to find it difficult perhaps to bevel some of these things because my selection tool is not working the way it should. It's selecting a bunch of random shit, which I don't want to select. However, I don't care because I created what I wanted to create. I don't want to do anything else here. So it really doesn't bother me. Okay. Now topology is going to cause you all sorts of other issues. If you're modeling something a little bit more sophisticated, especially if you're modeling monolithic objects. All right. If you want to get a better idea of how that works, I made a free guide, which you can download. There's going to be a link in the description. You go to my website. There's like a 16 page guide, which is going to explain to you everything about topology, why it's important, how you can take care of your topology, how you can apply this to your workflow to make sure this shit works properly. So go check that out. You can find it in the description or also my Instagram profile. And then you're going to be able to apply this to your projects a little bit better. So hopefully I gave you a quick explanation. If you got any more questions, let me know in the comments. Let me know on Instagram. And I'll see you in the next one.